This is the proper way to check your bearing preload on a 1993 Toyota T100 or accompanying vehicle. So what you want to do is you want to get essentially a meat scale that measures in both pounds and kilograms, um, depending on the specification that you're using. And what you want to do is you want to take your rotor off the ground with the, with the brakes off and you want to pull until your rotor starts moving. And as you can see, right about six, six pounds of pressure, the rotor starts to move. Now, you want to follow the specification in the book, which is 6.2 to 12.6 pounds of force that are needed in order to make this rotor move. But, uh, as you can see, now you don't want to get your bearings too highly loaded, because that could cause damage to the bearings and shorten their life and if they're too loose, your wheel could fall off. So that is the proper way to check your, um, your wheel bearing preload. And if you need to adjust the preload, then there will be two nuts here. I've already taken the first nut and the lock washer off. And this is called your adjustment nut. And you either want to run this in if you need more wheel torque, if you need more more uh, wheel bearing preload, or you need to back it out if you want less preload. Say it takes 25 pounds of force to turn this rotor over like this, then you need to uh, back it off. If it only takes two pounds, then you need to tighten it. Likewise, you should also feel your wheel, your hub assembly here, and make sure that it, it doesn't move back and forth because that can either indicate that A, this nut is loose and you need to tighten it down or that your wheel bearings are worn. Another thing of note, whenever you're checking the bearing preload on your Toyota T100 or 4Runner of about the 1993 model year, somewhere around there, you do not want this flange attached, right? Because this attaches the hub to the CV axle and the CV axle takes a considerable amount of force to turn over, right? If you were to take the CV axle out of, out of the car and attempt to turn it, turn it by hand, it does take a considerable amount of force to articulate the constant velocity joints, as well as to turn over the viscous couplings in the front differential. So, if you leave this flange attached, if you were to leave it on like this, and it were to, and you were to take a reading, it would, alter the amount of force being read by your tensiometer. So you need to remove this flange in order to get a proper reading on the preload of the bearing.